just over one percent of Australian agriculture's emissions are derived from horticulture, and about sixty percent of the the bulk of those emissions come from direct electricity use uh, for irrigation and cold storage uh, and things like that. Welcome back to the Vegalog podcast, a dialogue about the Australian vegetable industry from Ausveg. I'm Alex Lashchuk. Zero Net Emissions Agriculture Cooperative Research Centre is a multi-stakeholder approach to transitioning Australian agriculture to net zero, healthy, resilient and profitable food systems by 2040. Richard Heath serves as the CEO of Agriculture CRC and is the director of the Grains Research and Development Corporation. With a background as the Executive Director and General Manager of Research at the Australian Farm Institute and previous experience as the Associate Professor of Agronomy and Farm Management at the University of Sydney, as well as involvement in a large family farming business, he brings a wealth of knowledge to the table. Join us as we explore the strategies and challenges involved in achieving net zero emissions in the horticulture industry. Uh, all right. Well, good afternoon, Richard, and welcome to the podcast. Thanks, Alex. Very happy to be here. Richard, to begin with, could you please tell us a bit about the zero net emissions from agriculture CRC? Uh, what is its key purpose? How did it first become established? And what does success look like five years from now? Sure. Well, the Zero Net Emissions from Agriculture Cooperative Research Centre is a nationwide industry-led coordinated effort that will accelerate Australian agriculture's transition to net zero. Um, Like all CRCs, it works more towards the commercialisation end of the research spectrum. So we're all about developing, de-risking and scaling technologies which will reduce emissions right across agriculture, across all the different industries and through the supply chain as well. We're going to be delivering standardised, trusted guidelines, metrics, benchmarking tools to monitor on-farm emissions. And it really importantly, our key purpose and our vision is while reducing emissions, equally, equally if not more importantly, to grow profitable, sustainable businesses, farm businesses. We are not about reducing emissions at any cost. We're about reducing emissions in the process of continuing to develop profitable, sustainable farm businesses. Um, And we're going to do that through the creation of of really uh, world-leading innovation and progressive policies to accompany that innovation. We were established in July. We kicked off officially on the 1st of July this year after the bid success was announced uh, in December last year. We have 74 partner organisations that are part of the CRC. Uh, Between them, they contributed $87 million in cash, which is the, uh, and that was matched dollar for dollar by the Commonwealth Government, making it the most highly funded CRC that's ever come out of the Commonwealth program. In five years' time, uh, if I was saying what I would hope that success looks like, um, it will look like um, the fact that we are leading, coordinating, whole of agriculture, trailblazing research that is leading to emissions reduction um, in Australian agriculture. And I think one of the things that we will do that we're set up to do that is perhaps a little bit different to efforts so far in agriculture is that we will be very much looking at all of agriculture with whole farm systems. We're not looking at single technologies. We're not looking at individual sectors. It is about how we stack lots of technologies together to lead to emissions reduction for multi-enterprise businesses across all of agriculture. Um, We're going to do that through a nationwide network of producer demonstration sites. It's going to be one of the fundamental pieces of research infrastructure that we have, where we'll be able to conduct long-term, large-scale research that does that technology stacking, that puts lots of pieces of technology together um, into a farm at scale to see what that emissions, um, the, the result of those technologies result in in terms, in terms of emissions reduction. According to the Zero Net Emissions website, agriculture is directly responsible for 14% of Australia's emissions. Do you have a picture of what that percentage is for uh, vegetable production? And for an individual vegetable growing business, what are the key elements contributing to emissions? 
Sure. So look, that figure, um, you know, it's it varies quite a bit uh, in terms of the overall emissions, depending on whether it's a good or bad year in agriculture generally, whether it's drought or good conditions, how the rest of the economy is going, so that the share of, a, of Australian agriculture compared to the rest of the economy. So that 14% has actually been updated just very recently. Uh, we must need to update our website, obviously. Uh, the most recent figure is somewhere closer to 17%. Um, and interestingly, and, and really, to be honest, you know, what will be quite a challenge for Australian agriculture is that agriculture's share of the economy-wide emissions profile will continue to increase. There's no way around that. Um, agriculture is a biological process. We will always have emissions in agriculture. It will be unavoidable. We will try to reduce those as much as possible and, and offset what we can't reduce so that we get to that net zero position. Um, but our gross emissions will increase as a share of the economy because the rest of the con economy has non-biologically based technology pathways to reduce emissions. Um, so having said that, we, we have a very clear idea on what the makeup of those emissions are in Australian agriculture. Um, and most of the emissions do are, are uh, sourced in, in terms of methane from sheep and cattle, and that's about 77%. Um, horticulture is actually quite small. It's about what, just over 1% of Australian agriculture's emissions uh, are derived from horticulture. And about 60% of the, the bulk of those emissions come from direct electricity use uh, for irrigation and cold storage uh, and things like that. And then the rest of it is from fuel used in production and from nitrous oxide uh, coming from fertiliser use. I understand that the Zero Net Emissions CRC has four key research programs. Could you please explain a little bit about those and which are most relevant to horticulture? Sure. So our four key pillars are essentially plants, animals, whole farm systems and delivering value from the net zero transition. Um, the plants uh, pillar is the most relevant to horticulture, you know, obviously, uh, and um, However, even within that, there'll still be we are we are investing uh, across our portfolio um, in relation to where the emissions are. And as I said before, seventy percent of the emissions come from methane, so that's where the bulk of our investment will be. And we'll be doing a lot of investment in the plants pillar for improved pasture varieties that help with methane emissions. But within that plants pillar, we will also be investing in technologies and measurement systems and understanding that is directly relevant to horticulture. And that's things like uh, improved efficiency fertilizers. So um, either fertilizer coatings or, or new fertilizers altogether that um, either result in um, less direct emissions as nitrous oxide or uh, the, the need to use less fertilizers overall through different fertilizer products. Also things like incorporation of legumes into cropping systems, uh, the whole plant environment and plant system for uh, how that contributes into a mixed farm business, including horticulture, and how that leads to reduced emissions. Pillar three is also going to be directly relevant to uh, horticulture, and that's the whole farm and mixed enterprise systems analysis. So that is the measurement systems, the validation um, processes, the reporting platforms that go towards how we account for emissions from a farm business, which is becoming increasingly important uh, in terms of the way that you're going to be interacting with banks, insurance companies, supply chain partners, uh, all the retailers will have to be very shortly statutory, you know, a regulatory process around reporting their emissions profile uh, that goes back to the farm level. And so platforms that quantify what those emissions are on farm, report them all the way through the supply chain, are going to become part of the business environment that every farm business works in. So that pillar three that will be feeding directly into the systems that work in that environment will be directly relevant as well. And the final pillar also has relevance because that's how the, the broader economy, the broader economy transition to net zero is going to potentially benefit farm businesses. So things like the circular economy, so waste streams that can either be come into agriculture or waste from agriculture that goes out into the rest of the economy, how that can uh, help add value to a farm business. 
Uh, and also the energy transition. So solar, wind, hydrogen, you know, there are, what are the opportunities that help build a, an existing profitable farm business? We don't want, you know, we're not talking about replacing productive agriculture with something to do with renewable energy. We're talking about wanting to understand how renewable energy opportunities add to and benefit existing profitable farm businesses. For many growers, emissions reduction is often seen as another cost and compliance burden and often a trade-off against uh, economic imperatives that drive things like productivity, profitability, growth and asset building. How do you believe sustainability and productivity can work hand-in-hand, even increase financial viability? And do you have any examples to share? So the fertiliser one I talked about before, I think, is uh, a perfect example of where there is a win-win for emissions reduction and improved productivity and profitability. Uh, if less nitrogen is from applied fertiliser is going into the air as a greenhouse gas and emissions, it means that more is retained to be used by the plant uh, for increased productivity, or you just don't have to apply as much fertiliser. So the more efficient that we can get with fertiliser application, that is a direct productivity and profitability outcome that leads to lower emissions. So I think there's plenty of examples, and and you know to be honest. It's part of what we've been doing um, already for a long time in agriculture. It is just improved efficiencies. There is a different context now around understanding the emissions part of that equation in the improved efficiency and accounting for that. Um, but so many of the technologies that we're talking about is just the continual, continual building of best practice in agriculture um, that we've been doing for some time. With so many emissions calculators on the market, where does a grower start when wanting to embark on calculating their emissions? For instance, are their calculators more suitable to horticulture than other forms of agriculture? And will the CRC provide some kind of endorsement or tick for calculators recognised as effective models? So the HGAF calculator developed by the University of Melbourne, and HGAF stands for Horticulture Greenhouse Accounting Tool, um, is has been specifically built for the horticulture industry. It's available online and calculates a wide range of factors, including fertilizer use, urea application, leaching, runoff, crop residues, um, atmospheric deposition, field burning, all the things that go towards uh, your emissions profile as a horticulture business are built into that tool and is specifically designed for horticulture. That tool is actually um, the engine or the back end of the Agriculture Innovation Australia environmental accounting platform. So that's another tool that, uh, if you're using that one, uses that same calculator as the back end, so you'll get exactly the same result um, out of each of those. Um, and they are the most accurate, most uh, you know, well-credentialed calculators specifically for horticulture. Um, In terms of the endorsement or tick for calculators, the Commonwealth Government has announced that um, they're developing a national standard for carbon accounting by the end of 2024. And the Zero Net Emissions for Agriculture CRC are jointly chairing the committee that is overseeing the development of that national standard. So once that standard has been uh, produced by the government, then um, if you are just, you know, if you inquire whether whatever calculator you're using is compliant with that national standard, then you should know that it is consistent, that it is verified, that it's essentially, um, you know, well credentialed and accurate. How do SMEs, who may lack the technical knowledge or capacity in this area, begin engaging in the accreditation process to address carbon emissions? Um, so just the, the knowledge of your profile of greenhouse gas emissions um, using those sorts of calculators that we talked about previously is a great place to start. Uh, once you've got that knowledge, you can then talk with much more or have you know be in the conversation with much more authority if you are getting approached by your bank in terms of competitive finance, uh, which is happening more and more. Banks will be uh, needing to see uh, your emissions profile in terms of uh, their lending criteria and understanding that. Um, Supply chains, retailers are asking for that information more and more. 
So, you know, having that knowledge uh, just puts you in a much better position to have those conversations with business and supply chain partners that are just going to become part of the, the business language that we that we talk about more and more. Um, many organisations, industry bodies, um, because they're seeing that environment now, uh, are having a strong focus on emissions reduction uh, capacity building and extension to make sure that they can help their uh, producers in whatever industry participate equally in that environment. Well, thank you, Richard, for your insights into net zero emissions in horticulture and beyond. No worries. Thanks, Alex. You've been listening to the Vegalog podcast. Don't forget to subscribe and give the podcast a rating and review to help others find us. Vegalog is produced by Ozveg, the peak industry buddy for Australian vegetable, potato and onion growers. You can find more news and information from Ozveg at ozveg.com.au, on our social media channels or in the Australian Grower magazine. Thank you for listening. <laughs>